Welcome to Season 4 of The Good Pod. Today's podcast is presented by Dr. Barry Napier. Water Baptism Are there different types of water baptism? Does baptism offer salvation? The answer to both questions is no. There is only one type of water baptism and it does not save a person in any way. Is there then a difference between the baptism of John and the baptism of Christ? In Luke 3 verse 3 we read this, And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. This text, speaking of the baptism given by John the Baptist, tells us several things. It says that John was preaching. The word means to proclaim a command in a formal, serious and authoritative manner. A command that must be obeyed. John proclaimed baptism or baptisma. Baptisma means more than immersion. It means to submerge completely. Uh, Thus baptism means to be completely covered by water and not simply sprinkled. John's baptism was an act of purification for the Jews, who had to confess their sins before they could undergo spiritual reformation as Jews. Thus John's baptism was just within the latter few moments of the Old Testament era, bearing in mind that he was the last of the great Old Testament prophets. It was quite valid so long as the baptised Jews actually repented and did what God commanded Jews to do, and at this time still included uh, performing the rites and rituals in the temple. The first apostles were baptised in this way, and it was a sign of Jewish repentance. The same word for baptised, baptisma, is also used of Christian baptism of saved Jews and Gentiles. The word itself is the same, but the meaning behind it is slightly different. In the Christian sense, baptism is an outward sign of an inner repentance and salvation previously attained. It did not in itself save a person, but was a sign to the world that the person had already been saved and was now willing to witness to that fact. This is why in many Muslim countries, nationals who are saved are not persecuted until they witness to their faith in an act of public baptism, which indicates to all that their faith is real. Note this was changed with the emergence of ISIS. Any reference to salvation in Christian terms is now judged worthy of death. In the verse, repentance is the same repentance found in Gentiles who are saved. The remission of sins is also the same as that found in Gentiles, as are the sins, the hamartia. So, although the text refers to Jews, the activity applies to both Jews and Gentiles. Paul confirmed this in Acts 19 verse 3. There is only one baptism. Ephesians 4 verse 5, and the meaning of it is given in Romans 6 verse 4, Colossians 2 verse 12, 1 Peter 3 verse 21, etc. The Romans text, for example, states, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Here, baptism represents dying to this world and being resurrected spiritually into new life by the power of God alone. Thus, baptism is not a vehicle of salvation, but is just a sign that we have already been saved. The process of entering the water, being fully immersed and coming back out again, is symbolic of dying to the world and then being buried and arising in new life. It is the way a Christian witnesses to the reality of his new faith. This tells us that infant baptism and baptism of children who are too young to understand is definitely not biblical and is a useless rite. Other texts referring to salvation itself also confirm this. 
They cannot possibly comprehend what they are doing, nor can they understand spiritual realities. Yes, there are a few exceptions, but they are very rare. The text also tells us that mere sprinkling and infant baptism is also unbiblical, because the very word baptisma means total submersion. Another fact found in this text is that salvation is executed by the glory of the Father. That is, it is all of grace. If baptism gives us, gave us salvation, then it would be of works, not of grace. Salvation would be ours if we simply dip in water. Baptism, then, has no link with salvation other than as a symbol, a recognition of what uh, is known as salvation. That this is so is found in 1 Peter 3, verse 21. In the words, like figure, it means resembling, or not the actual thing, but a representation of it, that is, symbolic of the death and resurrection of Christ. Baptisma, baptism, is rooted in the word baptizo. The meaning of this word clearly repudiates the idea of simply sprinkling, Sprinkling is not Christian baptism, but has more to do with the ancient cult rites of pagans, which is why it is found in Roman Catholicism. Baptizo means to submerge completely, like a sunken ship. It also means to be overwhelmed as in a catastrophe. These meanings cannot possibly include the rather lame and passive act of sprinkling. The Greek word bapto serves as a comparison. In about 200 BC, the Greek physician Nicander wrote a recipe for pickling vegetables and the description contains both words, bapto and baptizo, thus giving us a very clear indication of the difference between the two. Nicander used the word bapto to mean to dip vegetables quickly, blanching them in boiling water before they were baptised. Baptizo means to be submerged for a longish period. In pickling vinegar, bapto indicates a temporary and fleeting action, whereas baptizo indicates a permanent, radical, irreversible change, where the vegetable's character after pickling was totally different from its character before pickling. Now applied to the biblical meanings, baptizo refers to a real life change, where the spirit that was once dead has been made alive forever. Again, this illustration more than adequately shows that sprinkling is not the same as baptism or baptisma, but is more akin to bapto, a quick and temporary action which cannot and does not effect or reflect change. In such a short introduction to baptism, there is no need to prove that, there is, that it is commanded of God. I have already shown that by preaching of baptism uh, means to show obedience to God in the matter. Let us, however, emphasize certain important points once more. A. Baptism, or baptizo, means total immersion, being covered fully by water. B. Total immersion does not give a person salvation. C. Baptism does not give a person entry into the Church of Christ, that is, the body. Salvation does that. D. Only God, not baptism, saves, by grace alone. Otherwise it is of works and not of grace. And E. Baptism is merely a sign of salvation already received. By now it should be painfully and glaringly obvious that sprinkling is a nonsense and a denial of scriptural truth. So is the baptism of babies and very young children. There is only one baptism, in essence and in practice. Not to acknowledge it is to ignore God's actual command. When men called by God preach God's word, they do not open their mouths for the sake of it. They are giving God's commands, which are to be obeyed. Not the man, but God. No matter which way sects and denominations care to twist it, baptizo means just the one thing, as explained earlier. 
This explanation is straight from God's word. It is not my personal opinion. Therefore, all who hear this podcast must immediately put matters right if they have previously ignored the true biblical meaning of baptism.